Hello everyone, welcome back to Prince and Nikki's channel. We hope you've had a great Christmas and a happy new year. Um, thank you all for joining us in the more recent videos that we've posted in the past 10 days. Um, we are trying to make a concerted effort to try and bring some more content yes. and actually sit down and put all the videos together that we have because we've been rather busy towards the end of the last year. So um, we're trying. So if you appreciate our efforts, please do like and subscribe to our channel. Show us that you're joining us and that in the comments let us know what's working for you, what you're liking and things. Um, we want to create the content that is valuable to others who are starting out or on the journey. So let us know what you do like and we'll continue to, to bring the detailed videos that we try to bring. In terms of the um, views for the video, we do appreciate you watching the videos. Um, I just want to give you a big scream and shout and say please if you are watching the videos and you are the 70 something percent that are watching us and are not subscribed the regular retainers <laughs> <laughs> um do give us a subscribe and kindly show the love for us um it'd be really grateful if you do subscribe it helps us to continue to go and it helps us to be able to get the word out about some of the hot topics that a lot of you regularly comment on that's been really helpful um, we have a lot of knowledge, so please do help us to grow and share that. So today's video, what are we talking about today? Um, we're bringing you the final stages of the ground floor. Yeah, the, the whole ground floor of uh, uh, Project Casa Jose. We finished the whole ground floor now, just yeah. waiting for uh, the decking to start. So this one was just finished just before Christmas. Um, so today we're going to bring you an update on that. The previous video that we had was um, about the casting of the floor slab um, and then obviously the next stages will be reviewing the drawings with the client and making sure that you're happy with everything before we get on site. What you're seeing on the screen now is obviously this is the setting out. So what, make what you need to do is make sure that your um, foreman has a master printout, not on the phone, and that all the setting out of the first row of blocks throughout on top of the slab is, is clearly set out with a big massive piece of paper and that they have it in front of their eyes. <laughs> it's very important and, and also as you, can, you see the, the video just passed you see the guys were laying uh, DPC uh, that is the only way you can prevent rising damp so all our projects we, we use DPC on all our projects. So the reason why the DPC is so important, as we've said on some of our other videos and um, gets a lot of the views, it is we've, we, I feel like we're the preachers of DPM and DPC, <laughs> but it's so important. We're like the master preachers. But, Hallelujah. <laughs> um, so the DPC, the reason why it's so important, obviously when you've um, done your floor slab, you put the DPM underneath and that stops all the cold rising up through the slab and, and causing rising damp. Where we add in the, D, uh, the DPC now, this is the damp proof course. So where you have your first layer of block work, what you do is between the slab and the first um, course of blocks, you put that there with the mortar, as you see on the screen now, you put the mortar, then you put the DPC, and then you add the, the block work with a bit more mortar. Yeah, I, I think I'll tell you interesting things. Whenever we're laying this, uh, a guy, which is a builder working on a site not far from here, came and asked, uh, Mike, what glue are you using to hold the blocks to stay on this? <laughs> no, the whole building is going to be heavy on top of it. <laughs> what glue yeah. are you using to hold it? So they, they, it's a requirement. It's, it's, it's clearly stated in the Ghana building code that you should use... Um, a damp proof course but it's just that most people don't use it so yeah, yeah we highly recommend we, it we just like to preach on it because it will save you so much in the future the reason why you have this on on top of the dpm as well is that obviously your slab is very cold and the cold rises up into the block work that's where not just externally but internally in in the walls in the corners you might start getting mold and damp so that stops the cold penetrating the block work and the moisture building up yeah so as you can see on the videos there's been lots of progression it is quite a, a fast stage for um, any client when you're seeing the block work up 
go up it goes up really quickly and you really get to see your building come to life so what we always make sure is that once we've done the first course of block work to the setting out we do videos and um, send images to the client um, to make sure that they can see the, the sizes because we know from when we was in Ghana um, we was there when we did the floor slab and the first course of block work and once that comes to life, you really get a sense for the size of the rooms and, and, and it's where people might say, actually, can I move this slightly here or there? Obviously, you need to account for your structurals, but there's some slight amendments that can be made. Yeah, yeah. if you want any amendments, the setting out stage is where you need to do, do those amendments. You don't wait until you finish your block wall up, then you come and start knocking stuff down. So yeah, that's where you need to make the, the right uh, amendments. So we always send regular videos and, I mean, we, we do send communication regularly with all the clients that we're building for and, and we ask the same for our, our own project. We always ask for um, daily videos. We like to pick out on everything. <laughs> as, our, as our master at work, Mike, will say, Nicola does not miss a trick. <laughs> um, so just to point out on all our projects that we've been doing, um, the blocks that you see here, that we, we always use six inch blocks um, and these are quarry dust blocks. The reason why we use them is they're very solid, strong. It's a strength. We, the blocks yeah. that we use is class A, so there's class A, B, C or blocks. Uh, you can uh, ask your engineer what is specified, uh, but we, we use class A, which is the strongest block you can find on the market. So they've been tested by uh, uh, our engineers and they have made a standard or a specification. Yeah, so that, that we just try to make sure that um, everything that we use is obviously the best quality and we try to make sure the workmanship by monitoring and doing the videos helps us as well. What you see on the screen here, before you see the block work and the floor slab, you'll actually see the DPM that's sticking out the plastic. Um, obviously, when you come to later on finishing stages, that will be um, trimmed down. But it just gives you an understanding of the height um, and where it kind of sits, really. Yes, it's a clear in the, in the building code, Ghanaian building code, that this should be laid at least 150 mils above the highest point of the land. So what you need to factor in is that your finished compound level at the foundation stage. You don't wait and finish your foundation, then you fill your, 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 your ground all the way, then you lose the DPM. It's now sitting uh, below below your filling. It defeats the purpose. It will breach. What are you going to do? It will breach. It always need to be higher than the 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 uh, the highest point of the land. So at the foundation stage, what we always say with our client is, how do you want the house to be set out in terms of your compound level? So there is a video previously on, on Casa Josie. If you go onto our channel yeah. and click on the tabs, there's a tab called Playlist. We do have the P&D um, projects in there. If you look at Casa Josie project and go further down, we do have a video on the whole discussions around setting out, looking at the ground level, the street level and things. And that's quite important. It is. I think it's the, the, the advantage of having a, a contractor or somebody who understands the process is that you're looking at the whole scheme together. How does everything plays out? Uh, we, we talked about last time, we talked about even the screen level, everything, how does it plays out at the final end? You don't come back and find out that, oh, actually, I want my foundation higher. Oh, we can, we can fill in all those issues. You need to think about it at a very, very early stage. So we spend a lot of time at a pre-construction stage speaking to clients about how the setting up will work, what levels they will want, what, what is our proposal. Because, again, as the, the video you mentioned, uh, we talk about how in Ghana, typically you don't have drawings showing you the, the, the existing and the proposed levels because it's, it's just not done. 99% yeah. of the drawing we've seen, you don't see to say, this is the existing level, this is how the proposed level uh, need to be. Uh, so people finish all the house, oh, they go and then they put in two feet uh, uh, filling the, in a compound, they say, I want to be higher than the road. Then the, they lost the DPM, uh, you have damp issues. Um, so it's, it's good it's to follow very, the code. Yeah, it's just very important to obviously interlink everything that you're doing. 
And it's the same with this particular project. As you're going up with the block work, um, again, you're reviewing the windows as you're doing the block work and the windows after the first four courses are forming, you're actually seeing it come to life and you're discussing with the client, this is what it's looking like on site. How are you thinking? L let me know what you're thinking. Thinking forward about your security bars and your windows, um, the cost getting estimates. You might think actually, let's add another course or two. People <laughs> make choices um, as they go along and, and it's okay to make amendments um, yeah. as you go along. This is your dream home. Um, it's, it's, we, we work hard and we save hard for our homes. So we need to make sure we, we're getting it right. Yeah, on this project we brought we brought in the the plumber uh, very early on. I think once we 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 done four courses of blockways to put the continuation uh, pipes in because what we've learned uh, over a couple of uh, projects is that when those pipes are in first, the required cap around the columns and everything are, are well set out uh, instead of coming to to do it later stage because there is a minimum coverage required for the iron rods uh, in a specification to ensure that uh, we make sure everything is, is set out uh, very early on uh, so that the guys can just continue with the work. It, the, the, the still better prefers it because it's not going to come and now breaking walls to get the required depth because, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, it's not like typically uh, in a worst way, but you got your machine and just cut the walls. So these guys yeah. are using chisel and hammer because they, they need to make make sure they meet the specifications so when sometimes some masons could be a bit a bit a, a, a bit relaxed and don't lay the block to give this the same gaps because they don't want to cut that off the still bender has to do that uh, because i'll say to mike we need to check every single pillar uh this for example this this building we got 22 uh, 22 uh, columns we need to check every single one we got the required the required setting now because that is the basis of the design yeah it's really important the details is important to look at to, to look at the details uh i always say if you are in, in doubt ask a question thank you for those of you who are sticking through the video with us um let us know what you're thinking of the quality of the work um, i'm really pleased with it as always with the the way that they kind of lay the blocks and the masons details I, i'm pleased but let us know what you think and um do give us a like if you like the video um one thing we do once we get to kind of the lintel level is the carpenter comes in and starts working on the lintels and the column works. And this is alongside the steel bender who they work together to make sure we kind of develop and progress with the next stages. I must say when uh, Molly gave me his uh, quotation for, for this carpentry, I said, Molly, it's too, it's, it's, too, it's, it's, it's too expensive. He said, no, there's a lot of work involved. These columns are big that, uh, in terms of um, you know, because we put in all these rainwater pipes for the for the um, heating roof, doing all that. I said, there's more work here. I'm going to be here for a whole week. And mm -hmm. um, and also, we didn't want uh, to buy all the boards in order to save the client money. You buy some time, boards and just move the boards around. It's better than uh, buying all the boards. Then you do all and then you do the casting. Uh, for us, it's quicker for us. Uh, but it doesn't help the client. So I think this, what we did is, is to cut them in, in sessions, move the boards around. Uh, uh, and overall, you save the client money. Yeah, he is a good worker, Maoli. Um, he's very diligent in what he does. We, we are using him on our own projects as well, obviously. At the moment, we, we did put a video on our channel about our roofing stage. So obviously, if everyone's at different stages in their building, but if you're interested in looking into the roofing, and just get an idea of how um, roofings are done. We do have the video on the roof, and then you'll see, obviously, Maoli's done a lot of hard work, and it's very neat. So have, it, it, hit the video up and have a look. It is, and uh, this week is, is, is just finishing our, our roof now, isn't it? So um, for those who don't know, we decided to buy our own roofing sheets from China. What do you think of the whole process? Um, I think the process has been an interesting journey. Obviously, we've talked on videos about the pros and cons of buying roofing sheets from international or local. So there's a lot of details on the other video, but I found it to be a really pleasurable experience and the, the quality. Um, Maoli, the carpenter, 
was surprised when they came. He was like, oh, these are different from the ones that we have locally because we bought a thicker one than what's on the market. So there's yeah. a lot of um, I mean, it, it's not that the top, it, it's, it's not even a tough spec, but the, the thing is, what a guy said to us is, is this for your own project or, or is for a commercial project? Because that is what they do in China, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's about the margins. Yeah. So yeah. they'll give you something that looks the same, but it's not the same thickness. So they'll yeah. ask you, is it for your own project? The quality is The quality. It? And, and Molly couldn't believe that. Uh, how far the the thickness is, and I said, but you told me what you install were the same thick uh, specification. Yeah, <laughs> but they look the same. Obviously, <laughs> it looks the same, but it's a different <laughs> thickness. Yeah. So it's interesting to have a look at anyway. Um, just bringing you back to slightly before, you'll see that there's the feature columns on um, that was a few minutes ago. Those feature columns, they are we do get them on rental. The molds. And they do come with a worker that helps and assists on that. Um, yeah. We use those on feature columns on um, any projects that we're working on. And we find them to be a really nice finish. You can see yeah. they're very smooth. Um, and it, it just helps later on down it the line a, for the finishing. When you get an independent column and you rent those, it, it, it's, it's less work. You are not doing a lot of boxing whereby you've got issues where the boxing will, will, will open then you got blading, then you got honeycombs, concrete, no, but those foam work are perfect if you got those kind of um, any independent columns or feature columns, they are perfect uh, way of doing it. What you can see here on the doorway is you can see the lintel. Um, what we done on this particular project, the design feature is to save money in terms of the lintels. So the lintels on this project go over doors and window openings and doesn't go all the way around. Yeah, yeah, it's the best way to build where where you don't have openings. You're using a solid block. Uh, you don't need in order to do lintels all over because on top of this, before you cast uh, your floor, is a is a ring beam that goes all over uh, during the decking stage. So you don't need to do lintel all over. So just what's your estimate? If someone tells you, you need lintel all over, uh, speak to your engineer. Uh, yeah, I mean that's something that is a cost saving, but. That's what we've been trying to do and strive with doing P&D construction is there's lots of um, cost saving that can be made in methods that are, of, of building that actually we've been helping people really save on, haven't we? But obviously that comes with, you need the knowledge behind that. You need to be able to understand what you can and can't do without um spoiling the structural integrity and yeah. the design yeah and one of the ways people are doing windows now is 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 do the window very tall don't have um a lintel at all and then drop the beam draw the beam to create that a beam level so your window is very tall to the very uh, top of the room top of the room it, it's, it's it's design feature people are, are doing project last year we, we use that method so the windows are very tall windows uh, so there are different uh, ways of saving money uh, to achieve the same the same dream. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is where we finished at the end of the project. Um, what I can say is it's really nice and tidy. This was just before Christmas um, when they finished up and it was nice and tidy at the end. You see uh, all the block work and everything. So this is kind of the end of the stage, really. What I just want to give you a list in terms of this stage the materials that we use, uh, sand, we had river and normal sand, cement, water, stones, carpentry boards and the iron rods were 16 millimetres. If you do have any questions about the process that you've seen or any um, questions that you have about the materials, do drop us an email or comment. Our contact details are on the screen if you want to ask us about future projects Let's team up and have a discussion. Yeah, the good thing is we were far under our material estimate on this build. Uh, so good, good uh, way to save money to the client because all our approaches, the, the clients buy the materials. We don't want to uh, uh, front load the material to say you need X number of materials and whereby you don't use that in, in pocket of money. The whole process we're doing here is to help people to deliver the, their, to build their dream home and save money. Uh, so... Uh, the materials we bought uh, for the casting, that is, you can see the materials are there. Those are still we use for the whole of, of this floor. Uh, we only need to buy um, uh, a few, a few more uh, two trips of each 
for the next stage to cast the floor. And what is important, what, what is important uh, we do is we always mix our sun, normal sun with river sun. I talked about this in the last video, the reason why is because there's a, a research done uh, that was based on the gas of cement. How do you get the strength, the different strength grade of, of a concrete and to reduce the clay content. So we use river sand and all these sands are, are not from a cheap uh, whereby someone will tell you, I, I saw a quotation recently whereby they said a, a, a trip of uh, sand is uh, uh, 1,800. <laughs> <laughs> I took my max say, this one, <laughs> this one is, is not the proper sand. <laughs> what is it, a tuk-tuk? <laughs> so, so, that's what he said. He said so, <laughs> it must be one of those little tuk-tuks. So, so, <laughs> So it's, it's, I think you just got to be careful. You just, yeah. you just got to be careful. If, if someone asks, tell you you need you need three thousand blocks, uh, just just be, be careful that uh, they're gonna use three thousand blocks. If the person is buying the materials, if you are buying the materials, then there's no problem. So for this, you you see earlier on, you see some blocks over there. Those were the estimate we we gave, but we didn't uh, use all. I was asking my what happened here. What he explained to me he said this factory, their blocks are a big. Uh, uh, thicker that, than what we usually get get blocked. So there's some savings to the clients which we use for the for the first floor. So all good. Any savings go to the pocket of the of the client. This is just the living room. What I really like is as as Prince was saying about the mix of the concrete. It's really important. You will see on the projects that we do. What I like is the the floor slab. I always find once it's all done and we, we always leave our sites clean like this and tidy, you really get to see the scope of the quality of the floor slab, the no cracks, how level it is. That will prevent and save money in the future for the screeding as well. So, yeah, all in all, we're really pleased with this. Um, we'll be bringing more update on this once we start the decking in a few short months at the latest. Um, but we've got a few more things in the pipeline and obviously our roofing that we need to bring you an up-to-date video on. So thank you for sticking out with us, guys. Um, do hit the like and subscribe. Please, for you, 75%, hit the like. Let's give you a challenge on this video. I want to see how many subscribers we get on this video to see the, the jump. Get, share the love and um, let us know how we, we're getting on. What do you think? Let us know. But thank yeah. you for watching today. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.